Hello there and welcome to this vlog of July 2023 and today's video is going to be on the question that I undoubtedly get asked the most across the Battletech community especially from new players and that's I want to get into the law where do I start now this is you'll see this question a lot right you'll see it on forums you'll see it on like content creator videos you'll see it on social media and there's always i feel a very generic unsatisfying answer by older members of the community because the natural answer to it is we'll start at the beginning right which makes sense and i'm not criticizing that answer because if or for some people, the beginning might be the right place to start. But for a lot of people, it's not going to be the right place to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to outline some thoughts and a little bit of a, you know, a hypothesis. Um, keep it subjective to you as well, so to speak. So like I'm not going to just blanket give an opinion here. There is going to be some kind of rhetoric where I'm going to say you need to ask the question where do you want to start you know that kind of thing because I think when you're dealing with something like an IP like Battletech it is so huge that there is no right or wrong answer to this there is just I suppose like pointers in directions to say well maybe think about this or maybe think about this over here so yeah, um, it will be slightly watery, but on purpose I'm going to do um, that kind of format just because I really do think putting concrete answers in or saying you must go and read XYZ book, otherwise you're not going to get this setting. That's to me is the wrong answer if you want to give a wrong answer um, because some people just will not gravitate towards a certain format or a certain thing. Why did this question come up then? So I'll speak a little bit about that uh, before I kind of get into like the mechanics of this video. And it all stems from these books that I bought recently. So this is the uh, the Michael Stackpole Warrior Trilogy. And oh, these are pretty heavy, actually. <laughs> this is the Michael Stackpole uh, Blood of Kerensky Trilogy as well. You can see they're all beautiful hard copies, uh, really, really high quality. Um, I, I'm guessing the highest quality they've ever done for the fictions. Although saying that, I think you can also get these now in leather as well. Um, I'm presuming they will be more expensive. So, you know, I, I mean, to me, I love hard copy books. So I would never want leather. I'd always kind of go for these kind of hard copy formats. They're all in that kind of same, um, you know, size range as well. So they very neatly fit on your bookshelf, uh, which... For me, as a bit of a completionist, is quite important. And um, also because I don't actually own any of the paperback books anymore. I got rid of the ones that I did own years ago. And um, frankly, I'm not a massive um, Battletech fiction reader, believe it or not. I reckon out of the... Yeah, I mean, it's dozens and dozens uh, going into hundreds of novels. I think I've probably read about 20 I've reread the Stackpole um, books. I think I think I've probably read them three times in total, uh, like the entire trilogy, because that's he Michael is my favourite writer in BattleTech, which I'll talk about when we get into the fiction side of this. And I just love the those stories as well because it kind of goes from the like the Succession War up into like the Clan Invasion, which is kind of my bag and like where my my start point for BattleTech was. It branches out much farther than that, though. You've got like stories that go right up into like the Dark Age, uh, the Jihad, and now they're obviously doing uh, novels for the the Ilkhan era. So this these six books here are really, like I suppose for want of a better term, they are my my starting point for BattleTech. But I'm going to go into this a little bit now and talk about why that might not be right for you and you've got to kind of contextualize this in terms of what you like what kind of generation or age bracket you're in and what you want your battletech experience to be so what i'll do is i think in the first case it's probably a good starting point to talk about 
how I get my information and my journey on this. Um, that's my kind of subjective experience. And then I'll branch it out from there. And as I said, you know, I kind of Battletech begins and ends for me really with the 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 Michael Stackpole novels. I am, you know, over the next few years I'm absolutely going to give like the Ilkhan era a try, but I dislike the Dark Age and like the Jihad era so much that I've just got no interest in like reading the fiction from there. I, I've tried to do a little bit of dabbling, but just nothing about it appeals. I don't like the uh, the stories as well become like very short form, like short story novels and source books with like lots of odd things in there. And it's just, again, it's just not for me. So I really kind of gravitate towards that Succession War era, Clan Invasion, Fedcom Civil War. I've said that multiple times on the on the channel. And, you know, going forward, because I tend to pride myself on not being a like an old, tight, miserable person. <laughs> I'm kind of getting there now with my age, but I do want to, I don't want to just dismiss the Ilkhan era, and because I'm very much into Battletech, and that's the, I suppose, the new thing, if you want to put it that way, I'll definitely gravitate towards that. When I feel like I'm still kind of collecting for that clan invasion era, though, in terms of all the models and the reading that I'm doing, things like that, there was about an 18 month period where I was really kind of obsessive about the um the war of 3039 i've kind of moved on from that now and, and kind of getting back into the clan invasion era like quite substantially so now i've got these hard copy books i'll probably give them all a fourth read like over the next year um and then you know after that point i think when the next kickstarter comes and i've started to kind of plan collecting forces for the ilkhan era so i think that will then naturally get me up to date over the next you know say like 18 to 24 months but in terms of like other novels i've read like i mean i've read i suppose what you call the classics right so like you know there's the gray death legion um trilogy as well that's that's probably the most um obvious answer if someone is asking you where to start you will most people will say that because they are the i mean there's kind of you know there are other books like and short stories and source books and stuff like that but that's they are to me the first real like the 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 heart first part of Battletech is the uh is the the Grey Death Legion like trilogy and but I and I've read them I don't particularly gravitate towards them I don't think I'd ever read them again for instance I think they are unlike the Michael Stapp book Paul books they are quite dated and that is absolutely um, no reflection whatsoever on um, on William H. Keefe who wrote um, the uh, the Great Death Legion trilogy but it's just like you can see that the the entire like game and all the lore around it etc is just really trying to kind of find its footing and you know it's just it's slightly uh, over the top as well it's very 80s and it's I don't date is probably too strong a word but they're quite simple stories they're very fun I mean they're very like 80s action adventure whereas the the Michael Stackpole novels are much more it's, they're a bit like it's a spy thriller element to them there's a lot of geopolitics goes on and you, you get some of that in the Grey Death Legion trilogy as well but I think the the Stackpole novels are the you know like you can read those six books there and you can basically at that point if you understand them all can basically say well i'm a pretty died in the wool battle tech you know person now and i know exactly what's going on it gives you like a lot of the mechs are in there all the kind of the the forces and the house powers and all the geopolitics going on it's all those six books really kind of encapsulate so much of the the richness of the universe so from a fiction perspective, I think I would say that the Stackpole books are a very good place to start. But I'll now kind of go towards the, the direction of what this video is focusing on, of, of, of why this is very, very subjective to you. Because, and you know, there's a snobbiness to it as well. Um, because people just assume that everyone loves reading novels. Now... I enjoy reading. I am a, quite a big reader, but I'm an absolute like 
intellectual snob and I make no like you know airs and graces about that's just the way that I am you know I'm far happier reading like I don't know Grapes of Wrath or you know Blood Meridian or something like that I love like Americana um, like novels than I am reading like pulpy books from like the 80s 90s 2000s now and and this is nothing against like the Battletech writers or anything. There are, you know, generally there are talented bunch. I mean, Michael Stackpole in particular is a very talented writer. And, but, you know, it, it's one of those things where I'm reading it because I love the setting, but I'm not, I'm not particularly bothered about sitting and reading all X amount of novels when I can kind of get that data through other sources. If you don't, read novels or you've never really been into it or like me you've kind of you're a bit more highbrow or even if you're go the opposite direction you only read graphic novels for instance and there are graphic novels in Battletech in fact you can get one on the uh, uh from the kickstarter so and that's just reopened actually so if you're interested in that go and have a look at the the shop front there and there's a graphic novel in there but you, again, I'm snobby with myself, right? So if I'm reading like a, too many pulpy books, I think, why am I not challenging myself? That's kind of what I mean by snob, really. I'm not judging other people on it. It's almost like an inverse snobbery thing. But you be honest with yourself and don't go to people who will just say to you, oh, you need to start at this point here, otherwise you're not going to get the full thing. Because, and that was, you know, you could get away with saying that back in the 80s and 90s because there was very little source material. You'd have a couple of source books, there'd be the TROs, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, you, and the novels were probably one of, if not the uh, most appropriate place to get the data. If you just wanted to kind of know what was going on in the universe, or... Better still on that front, if you loved reading the novels and you really liked that style and you enjoyed pulp books, then fantastic, read the novels. But novels as a format, I mean, so many things have replaced them now. So, you know, like if you're, if you're thinking about like, you know, ascertaining that data, then there is SANA, for instance. SANA, the very, very fantastic Battletech Wikipedia, which is just absolutely incredible. And all the novel data is kind of distilled in there. So if you just want the facts so that you have a platform on which, you know, to play the game or to speak to it about people on forums, etc., you don't need to kind of have all the emotional uh, outlying material that exists in the novels because much of that will be kind of wrapped up in, you know, if you want to read about Natasha Kerensky, you don't, if you really want to delve into her character, then yeah, you probably best read in the novels that, have Natasha Kerensky in them but if you are much more like well I just want to know what she did where she did it and what she felt then it will all be kind of on the wiki, pe wiki pages or on the forums or you know you can ask people you know across the content creators who you probably can I mean we're they're a pretty accessible bunch like especially people on my kind of level because I don't get bombarded with messages or anything like that some content creators do but, you know, like there'll be plenty of people that you can have these discussions with. So, like I say, you don't have to just sit and read the novels per se. So I think that that idea that, like, you must start at a certain point is, is really very outdated. There's another factor here as well, I suppose, in times in regards how times have changed. And even though this was a thing back in, you know, going back years, we've had audiobooks. But now audiobooks are very, very popular. You know, you've got, like... Um, you know, software like Audible, where you can just go on there and, and buy an audiobook. And I mean, Battletech are doing those as well. So I think, not sure if the Stackpole audiobooks have been done yet. I'm pretty sure that they've done some of the books, but like you can definitely get some of them on Audible because I've had a look. Um, I do listen to audiobooks as well, but I, you know, I've, I've read the one, the ones that I have would be interested in listening to, I've already read. So yeah, I'm not particularly bothered about that. Uh, on the Battletech front, but there are some that, you know, certain audiobooks, especially if you're reading like more pulpy or sci-fi books, I'm much happier doing that as an audiobook. Whereas if I'm reading like a classic or something that's beautifully written, I just want the kind of the beauty on the page, if if that makes sense. Whereas, you know, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to say that Battletech is high art, right? Like it's, they are very pulpy, fun 
books for the most part. Very a lot, very intelligent books, very clever, but they're not. You know, you, they're writing those for commercial reasons to kind of prop up a gaming system so they can sell miniatures and other books and games and all that good stuff. So yeah, so again, no like illusion about it. It's that's that is just how it is. So yeah, if you are if you are interested in that and you're much more kind of keen to you like to you you and again this is a, a thing. Some people just will not want to sit and open a book and read. Some people will quite happily do it though when they're on a car journey and listen to it um from an audible format. So another option there for you. But again, just keep in mind that obviously that's gonna very much limit what you can do because that's up to then catalyst to kind of hire somebody to read the books, which isn't cheap. And then you've probably, you might have like, I don't know, 10 books or something like that, that you can have access to. Unlike obviously if you're going in the getting paper or hard copies or whatever, or PDFs, and then you can obviously read everything in the entire Pantheon. The other option is, and I think this is a, actually a great place to start, are the aforementioned TROs. These are the two relatively new ones that Catalyst uh, brought out um, during really the last Kickstarter. So that's the Succession War era and the, the Clan Invasion. There are others as well. I think they've just done um, two more. I think I think there's a... I think there's, is, there was certainly like a, um, a Word of Blakey Jihad era one. I'm not sure if they did a Dark Age one as well, possibly. Um, there are loads of other ones as well. I mean, there are absolutely hundreds of TROs. They've just released like, um, there's like loads of them on like digital format as well. And these though, I think are, if you don't want the novel experience where you have to kind of sit and, you know, you, I mean, you're talking about like these books will be a hundred thousand words approximately, which is, you know, I mean, the standard novel is like, you know, 80 to a hundred thousand around there. So, you know, it, these though are very much things that you can just kind of flick through on a whim. So you, I've just opened the page up here and it gives you like the data on the hatchet man. And you get like a lovely bit of like spiel, nice and concise, just just, just a few paragraphs really. Gives you like a, a list of notable mech warriors, gives you a couple of variants that you can use. Although I think actually on this one, it's just the, looks like the base hatchet man here. But, you know, that's irrelevant because you can find the other variants of the mechs like very... I mean, just go on Flex, right? Go on Flex and just type in Hatchet Man. It will pretty much give you every version ever made on there. So these are much more for me just for, like, the extra colour that you get. And, and the artwork as well, obviously. And they've kind of, I think, purposefully used, like, old styly artwork here. You can see that's, like, the Exterminator. So, you know, it's just... a. Uh, these to me i think if again going beyond my own subjective opinion um i think if you're just kind of batting it around as an idea i think if you if you you are brand new to battle tech i think it's you could do much worse than picking these two up um they're not that expensive either i'm guessing they're about 25 30 dollars each they're big as well you know lots of artwork lots of copy and you can just you know flick through that at your leisure so you know you've got like a, a free afternoon and you are like watching some trash on netflix and you're not you're kind of semi watching it well you can just kind of have this next to you and just be like oh look look at these interesting mechs and the stories and the the kind of the the law and the fluff that you get in here is will teach you so much about the about the setting because obviously like battletech is um it's far more than just the mechs, but the mechs are very, very central to the setting. And they're also very important because like the mech journeys really coincide with what's going on in like a geopolitical and a wider narrative sense. So, you know, like in the succession wars, they've got like a handful of like amazing mechs from the Star League era left, but mostly speaking, they've got like the succession wars junker mechs. So you'll find like, you know, certain they're, they're very simple the armaments are very simple most of them are not very heat efficient that kind of thing and that's kind of that reflected the society that the mechs were in and around then you get into the clan invasion this is like massive spike in technology and there's like a massive spike in technology across the like the inner sphere as well 
just not not in just regards max but in everything else things become more like militaristic so you know you've got like like the fedcom uh, alliance where you've got like a, a this giant really sophisticated hierarchy military between these two massive like uh, organizations with the fed sons and the, and uh, the lyra commonwealth so you know like it, everything jumps up then you go into the dark age if you get the dark age tro it will be full of like industrial type mechs because things have basically fallen apart during that juncture so just going on the journey with the mechs will teach you so much about what is actually going on in the setting and i i guess really because i own quite a few tro's i reckon 70 80 percent of my intel comes from the tro's um they're interesting as well because they're obviously it's not just one person that's predominantly writing it all i'm sure some of these it will be like one or two people but you can actively see different like voices and takes on things and you can sometimes like you can see the person that wrote it absolutely loves the mech and that will kind of come out in the copy and you know it will teach you other things as well that you don't necessarily get out of the novel so you start to kind of see how the industrial side of Battletech works because they'll keep mentioning the names of factories and they'll say things like well you know the fed sons had this factory until I don't know, 3065, and then it fell into the hands of this power here, and then they lost the ability to make this mech. And that, again, it just gives you such a a, a flavour and a dimension to uh, to the setting and all the kind of groundwork that goes on um, that kind of allows us to kind of then have the novels, which is kind of based on this, like, um, you know, or the foundation stone that things like the TROs, the source books, the and now going forward in the future, things like you know Sana and all those resources where, you know, that you can. I mean, I, and I think it it makes like writing BattleTech novels so much easier because you've just got no excuses now. Like you can just go and get all these TROs on as PDF, so you can just have a look at Sana and see it from an official site or see where they got that reference from from a certain quote or something like that so it's never and it's the same for the world really like knowledge is now at our fingertips battle tech's no different so again just don't intimidate yourself by thinking oh my goodness i've got to read all this otherwise i'm not going to understand the setting that simply is not true. It's just they give you a more detailed richness. There's an emotional element to it as well because obviously you kind of either fall in love or despise certain characters. So, you know, you've it gives you... I suppose if you want to look at it like this, like if you were just reading like the TROs, you'd have kind of a two-dimensional understanding of Battletech. If you get into the fiction, you'll have a three-dimensional understanding, but both are completely valid and both are completely determinant on what you want out of it. So... You know, if you don't play tabletop, but you love the Battletech settings, but you only play like the Mech Warrior games or whatever, and you just want to know a little bit more about it, go for the TROs. You know, that's a much better place to start. Uh, I've not mentioned much, much about source books, obviously, but source books are a, a huge thing uh, in Battletech. Source books, if you are unaware, it's basically it will be a book on a specific topic. So you might just have a book on. So like the word of Blake or Comstar or the, the you know the Lyran Commonwealth or Clan Jade Falcon or whatever else and it will be a pretty decent sized book that gives you maybe like the history of them updates from like what's happening in the current law there'll be lots of like interesting gameplay stuff in there as well so you'll get things like um, like record sheets at the back usually or it will give you. Uh, random uh, allocation tables as well if you kind of want to create a force so you can see what 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 mechs certain forces have access to or what you are more likely to find in those forces again i think source books they're so obsolete now really though as a format because so much of this data is just online not all of it i think if you really like see if you really loved like clan jade falcon i mean go see a therapist first of all but if you if you really love them um then yeah get the book because it will you will get maybe several extra pages of data that's not online anywhere or it's not on sana and it will give you a, a richer format for it but like generally speaking like all the rats tables and the you know the the mech um the mech sheets, the record sheets, things like that, they're all very readily available. And you can, you know, you can go on Sather and you can have a look at like the page for the, um, 
you know, for the, I, I don't know, like a, a specific mech that's like, like the Cougar, which is a, in my mind, like a Jade Falcon mech. And you can just have a look at that on there. I mean, there's an argument to say that you can do the same for the TROs as well. I think the one difference with the TROs, though, is that you'll find that, like, so like on Sana, they'll have like one page. So, so you're looking at like the Mongoose, right? So the Mongoose copy description in here will be different from what's on Sana. And the Mongoose will exist in several TROs and it will be updates to that mech or, you know, like just so be, be aware of that. So, you know, it's, you're not just getting like that one, you're only getting that one source really on Sana because it's just one page. Uh, if you really kind of want to get into the TROs from a certain era, so like the Succession War Mongoose is very different from the Star League era Mongoose, for instance. So... You know, and you're not necessarily going to get all that data on Sana. So much like with the source books as well, it's just like that. I think these books are far more palatable, or the TROs are far more palatable than source books because source books do go into a lot more data and, you know, like a lot of history. And are you necessarily going to sit there and read it all? Probably not. I mean, I don't like even me. I mean, I love like the Fed Sons. I've never, I don't think I've ever sat and read the entirety of the Fed Sons book. I've read like probably about half of it you know i'll be thinking i might be playing a game and thinking did the fed sons have access to this planet or was it taken by the draconis combine in this day? and then i can kind of go on there for a quick reference but again it's actually much easier for me to just go on sana and type in the planet name and it'll tell me exactly when the planet was owned by which faction so you know it's again we're in the changing times is what i'm trying to say so don't don't listen to the whole like or necessarily listen to the whole you've got to start at this juncture um i suppose a hybrid way to do this as well and i suppose this will then conclude it and then i'll wrap up you could for it like say you were brand new to battletech and you were in your 20s and you hear everyone like me of my age going on about the stat pole books and you know the succession wars and you're thinking yeah, but that's like 20 years ago now, uh, or 30 years ago now. I really want to just kind of jump in at the current era, which is the Ilkhan era. Um, in that case, then you absolutely don't re need to read 95% of the no model, uh, the novels or the TROs. That you, I mean, I think it's important that you have some kind of ground knowledge on that, because otherwise you're dipping into something that you've got no context for. So you need to know really kind of like what the star league is who you know the free world's league are what the clan invasion was about but you can find all that just from watching youtube and presuming that you are younger if you're just getting into battle tech now then you know you go and just i mean just watch texas videos right so you just go and watch the kind of his pantheon of videos that he does on the battle mechs and he's obviously done like the um you know certain well, he, he, t he tends to do the, say, historical stuff that goes back into um, Battletech's history. So, and you'll learn a, an absolute ton watching those, and it will kind of set the foundation. But then you can absolutely just go and buy, like, the Ilkhan recognition guides and, you know, the have a look at the, the record sheets to see where the technologies are. I mean, prior warning on that, like, the Ilkhan era is far more sophisticated and more complex to play. That's why the Succession War era is a very good place to start, because it's really easy and simple. Um, and I think if I was going to give my subjective opinion on that, I'd say that, that it's probably best just to dip your toe in at the Succession War era. And again, you don't have to go massively into it, but you know, if you kind of know what an AC-10 is and an M-Laser and, you know, what how internal structure works and jump jets and things like that, you can then use that as the platform to build. And you, you'll start to see then that when you get into like the Ilkhan era, things just get so more weird and wonderful. So like there are certain like armor types that are resistant to like, laser fire or ballistics or you've got like composite armor which basically crumbles it does like double damage when it's attacked so or when it's um uh, basically when it gets hit by anything and you've gone through the armor so it can get very complex and i think that can be quite overwhelming so succession wars is probably a logical place to start if you want to just do the tabletop thing but again there is no right answer to it and i think you've also got to I'll, I'll say this then i'll wrap up you've got to always contextualize it that you are dealing with like people who are quite nerdy and like well read on the subject and because 
I mean, I certainly like this. Like, I'll sit and read this stuff and watch the videos and, and whatnot. And then I, I like to know what I'm talking about. And if I'm speaking to people that don't know the setting but ask me about it, you've got to really rein yourself in sometimes from just like, bleh, just telling them like everything. And you will get that across the community a lot. So if don't be daunted by that. If someone just like spills their guts and just goes into massive amounts of irrelevant detail on their experience, then, you know, just be like, okay, that's interesting. But then, you know, just have a look around, see what's available kind of on the storefronts and obviously then what you can afford. And then just like dip your toe into it. But again, don't feel any pressure. Just because someone is like, oh my God, everything's about the Grey Death Legion. It all starts with the Grey Death Legion. Like, yes, there's, that's a valid point, but it's not necessarily something that you will appreciate on your journey through Battletech. Like, the Grey Death Legion might just be a footnote for you. Like, you know, yeah, they discovered the whole memory card. Yeah, they came back in 3150 as a smallish outfit, but, you know, it's not the they're not the be-all and end-all. This is a big galaxy. There's a lot to explore. And, you know, maybe, for instance, you just like the clans and you you, you like the the weird and wonderful part of Battletech. So you're kind of more interested in what's going on in the home clans. In that situation, you don't give a damn about the Grey Death Legion, right? So see what works for you, is what I'm saying. And then, you know, just make your choice on that and then build out from that. And there is absolutely no wrong way to do it. It's, you know, you can make... I mean, that's the joy of Battletech, really. It's so, I suppose, inclusive from a like a user standpoint because it's very open worldy and if you want to kind of get into the tabletop game or the computer games the novels watch the you know like youtube content creators whatever there's it's it's not a closed shop there's no there's absolutely no right or wrong way to do it anyway i'll leave that here oh one more final thing these books these wonderful books i should do the plug really before we wrap up um the kickstarter has reopened um, and it finishes on the 31st of July. So make sure you get all that in uh, before then put all your confirmed orders in. You can buy these trilogies. So it's the six books here. And you can also get the... I always get the name wrong on this. It's the um, the Jade Phoenix trilogy, is it? I think it's called. Um, then that they're available as well in the hard or the leather books and you can get them on the uh, on the kickstarter like store front page before you do your completed order great deal like i say it's i mean i bought them from um, a hobby store in the uk that are basically stocking these now so i've got them a little bit early but if you are finding trouble getting them anywhere and you've got the kickstarter it's 30 35 bucks for three you know, which is a great deal. So if you did want to kind of get into it, you can buy the Warrior Trilogy, 35 bucks. Again, I can't tell you how good these are in terms of quality as well. It, they are so like well done. They've clearly spent like a lot of um, money on getting all these like out there, which is a great choice, really nice artwork on there as well. So a little plug there, if, you, if you've got that spare 35 bucks going around and you want them in a nice solid hardcover, which is good for me as well because I do like to reference these. And if you've got like the uh, the paperbacks, they just fall apart very quickly. So absolutely um, worth my money anyway, these for sure, because they will last forever. Anyway, on that, I will end it. So I will thank you very much for watching and I'll hopefully catch you again next time.